my friends. It's attorney Anthony Bandiero here, uh, Bandiero, bringing you the roadside chat. This question comes from another, uh, an officer from California. And it's a pretty short and sweet question. I'll get down to the point. It's as uh, the officer is looking for some clarification about when they can enter backyards in response to a burglar alarm. So the officer says, is there any case law defining how and when officers can enter curtilage based on report of an alarm with no further known circumstances? All right. Um, so let's break this up a little bit. Let's first start off with what is curtilage. Curtilage is that area around a home that for constitutional purposes treated like the home itself. Well, that's a mighty big compliment because nothing is as protected as the home, right? So that area around the home is often protected like the home itself. Um, there are four factors that determine whether or not an area is curtilage. They include proximity to the home. The closer you are to the home, the more likely you are standing on curtilage, not open fields. The next one is enclosed. Is that area that you're standing on next to the home, is it enclosed by some kind of fence, right, or other um, structure? It just makes sense that when you put a fence up, you basically send a signal that you want that area more protected than open fields. The next factor is the use of the area. And that's a very important factor because why are we protecting a piece of property around the home, like the home itself? Because the area is being used for domestic life, essentially, right? That when the when the homeowner or occupant is standing on this area, they think to themselves, man, this is this feels like I'm, you know, in, in like uh, associated with my home, right? This is like my home life. I'm physically and psychologically, this is associated with my home. And the final factor is sight screening. Has the person done something to keep prying eyes out? Do you need all four factors? The answer is no. But these are the four factors that courts use. The two most important factors by far are proximity and use. The closer you are to the home and if the air is being used for family activities, it's most likely going to be curtilage. Now, let's go into our burger situation. There are two uh, things that we, we see in case law when it comes to burger alarms. One is entering the backyards and two is entering the home itself. My officer is talking about the curtilage, which is usually going to be the backyard. Um, the case I have for you, it's, it's, uh, let's uh, bring it up. The case I have you is Belita versus McLeod. It's a case of the First Circuit. The citation is 211 F3D 166 2000. Okay. Belita versus McLeod. So what happened here was that an alarm went off at, um, at the residence and the uh, base office alarm, the officers enter into the backyard to see signs of entry and so forth. While, while in the backyard, it's a funny case actually, while in the backyard, the officers saw a pet raccoon. Well, you can't have a pet raccoon, I guess, you know, unless you have a license or something, right? It's a, it's a wild animal. So the court or the cops called uh, uh, Division of Environmental Management who came out and seized the raccoon because it did not have a, they did not have a license associated with the raccoon. And the homeowner sued, said, whoa, 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 you, you, you took my property. So the first question, the reason why we have, there's a few things in this case that are kind of interesting, but the first thing I want to talk to you about is, were the officers lawfully present in the backyard? So that would be like plain view, right? And the answer is yes. So here is um, the quote from the case. Warrantless entries are most often justified by exigent circumstances, right? Warrantless entries into protected areas like the backyard. The best examples being hot pursuit of a felon, eminent destruction or removal of evidence, the threatened escape of by a suspect, or eminent threat to the life or safety of the public, police officers, or a person in the residence. Here, the entry into the backyard in response to the silent security alarm is perfectly is a perfectly good example of a perceived eminent threat. And Belita herself 
does not claim that the officer's entry was unjustified. So that's a great example. And so what I want to, the, the lesson I want to so far is that getting into the backyard, quite frankly, is going to be a lot easier than making an entry into the home. I think that just makes sense. Even though the U.S. Supreme Court in a case called Florida Jardines, that's where they said that the, uh, the curlers should protect like the home itself, like the home itself. They did not use the word the same as the home. Getting into the backyard is different than getting into the living room, right? And so that's an example here. It does make sense that if you have the silent alarm that you should be able to look at the perimeter of the home to see if there's signs of forced entry. Um, so you have exigency there. You also may have a form of implied consent because when people sign up for uh, uh, alarm service, like ADT, that is also going to notify the police. Um, the person knows that. And it should, it can be argued that they're also implicitly agreeing that if that alarm does go off and they are not there to tell the police that it's a false alarm, that the cops are going to look in the backyard to see if there's a sign of forced entry. I mean, that's probably how most burglars are going to do it anyway. They're going to go into the backyard where they're out of sight, at, you know, and they can make their, their entry. Getting into the home, though, getting into, into the home is going to take what I call burglar alarm plus, right? I personally would never force my way into a home unless I have a reason to believe that somebody could be in the home, a, a, a burglar in the home right now. So I'm looking for things like signs of forced entry, a car in the driveway doesn't belong there, right? You run the, the, the tag and it's a different address. The neighbor saying the people are on vacation, a high increase um, of daytime burglaries in this, this, this area. Um, of course, signs of, you know, forced entry, uh, an open door, but be careful there, right? I mean, you're going to want to definitely make sure you announce and, and you know, you don't want to have a, um, you know, an armed confrontation with the occupant who did set the alarm off and forgot that they um, that, you know, that they forgot to, you know, put the code in or something like that. Because in reality, most burglar alarms are false, right? Um, you know that I know that out of 100 burglar alarms, how many are truly, you know, real? Maybe maybe five. I'm just guessing here, but that sounds about right, doesn't it? Um, mo the vast majority are, are false. So what I'm looking for, so getting into the getting into the backyard, I think is pretty easy with just the burglar alarm. Getting into the home, we want something plus. I hope that helps, right? I hope that really helps. So guys, my goal in life, my professional goal is to make sure that you get your legal decisions correct every time, right? We cannot afford missteps. You got to have your legal survival is so important. So getting it right every time, that's what we're here for. If you like what we're doing, hit that, that like button. That takes no calories, Okay hit that like button before you leave, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. Okay. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. When it comes to law enforcement training, we are the gold standard. Visit blue to gold.com or call 888-579-7796 to learn more about our training books and free webinars. Also, don't forget to like subscribe and share this channel.